All right. So we are at the review for surface area and volume of 3D figures, area of triangles and similar solids. We're going to begin with the cylinder. Well, we know, so we're going to have to find the volume and surface area for each of them. I'm going to start with the surface area. My surface area formula is 2 pi r squared plus 2 pi r h. Okay, so I'm going to plug each of those in. Here I know my diameter is 14, which makes my radius 7 meters. So then my surface area, 2 pi times 7 squared plus 2 pi 7 times 25. I put all this into my calculator. All right, so I plug all that into my calculator and I get 448 pi meters squared. Or I put the pi in and I would get 1,407.433 meters squared. Either answer is fine. You know which one your teacher would like if you have me. Either one is perfectly fine. So for the volume, I know the volume of a cylinder is pi r squared h. So my volume here, pi times my radius, which is 7 squared times 25, and I get 1,225 pi meters cubed. And if I multiply that by pi, I get approximately 3,848.451 meters cubed. Again, either answer is fine. Number two, my surface area, I use my same formula. 2 pi r squared plus 2 pi r h, plugging in my r radius is 15 and my height is 26. I plug it onto the calculator. I get 1,230 pi centimeters cubed, squared, sorry. Multiply that by pi. I get 3,864.185 centimeters cubed. For the volume, use the same exact formula for all three of these. My volume is pi r squared h. So that's pi 15 squared times 26. I get 5,850 pi centimeters cubed. If I multiply that by pi, I get 18,378.317 centimeters cubed. Either answer, again. Number three. Surface area, my radius is 8, my height is 24, just plug it in. 2 pi times 8 squared plus 2 pi 8 times 24. So 2 times 8 squared plus 2 times 8 times 24. And I get 512 pi feet squared. Multiply that by the pi and I get 1,608 point four nine five feet squared. And again, just like I've said multiple times now, either answer works. Volume, pi r squared h. So that's pi times 8 squared times 24, which is 1,536 pi cubed, or 4,825.486 feet cubed. So there are the volume and surface area of all of our cylinders. For number four through six, I'm dealing with a prism. If you notice, four and six, I have rectangular prisms. Five, I have a triangular prism. So for number four, my volume, or excuse me, I do surface area in green. Surface area. It's 2 times the length times width plus 2 times the length times height. 
So that's two times the width times the height. And the volume is length times width times height. So surface area. 2 times 10 times 3 plus 2 times 10 times 4 plus 2 times 3 times 4. does not matter which order you do those in because multiplication is commutative. And I get 164 centimeters squared. My volume, I multiply all three numbers together. So 10 times 3 times 4. And I get 120 centimeters cubed. All right, number five requires a little bit more work. I'm going to do this in red. All right, so my volume or my surface area for my triangular prism, I keep saying pyramid. One second. All right, my surface area for this figure. HP plus 2B, where H is the height of the prism, which is 15. P is the perimeter of the base, and B is the area of the base. I've got to figure those out. So I'm going to, here's my base. Base is my non-rectangular figure. So I have a right triangle, which means in order to find the third side right here, I'm going to need to do Pythagorean theorem. I know my 8 and my missing side are my two legs, my 10 is my hypotenuse, so that's 64. So I get this side here is 6, and I could have done that quickly because it's a 3, 4, 5 triangle set. So my, per my perimeter of it is 8 plus 6 plus 10, which is 24. The area of the base, one half base times height, so that's one half eight times six, which is 24. When I multiply all this together, I get 408. Centimeter squared. For the volume, it's the area of the base times the height. We already found the area of the base. The area of the base was 24. The height was 15. So multiply 24 times 15. And I get 360 centimeters squared. Cubed, sorry. All right, for number six, I'm back to a rectangular prism. So I'm back to my original, my surface area being 2LW plus 2LH plus 2WH. So this is 2 times 5 times 13 plus 2 times 5 times 3 plus 2 times 3 times 13. Put all that into my calculator. I get 238 meters squared. For the volume, I'm back to my length times width times height. So that's 5 times 13 times 3, which is 195 meters cubed. All right. Oh, sorry. Move on to the next page. All of these are pyramids. So my surface area for a pyramid formula is one half lateral or slant height times the perimeter plus the area of the base. My volume is one third area of the base times height. So we're going to be probably missing some pieces here. For number seven, I know my height, the 4 is my height, the 6 and the 6 are both pieces of my base, so I need my slant height. 
So I draw this line here if I'm going to make figure out where the right triangle is. There's my right triangle. I'm going to draw it over here to the side. I know this part on the base is 3, so it's half of the 6. My height's 4. I'm looking for my slant height, so I'm going to have to use the Pythagorean theorem. 3 squared plus 4 squared equals L squared. 9 plus 16 equals 25. So L is 5. So then I do my surface area. Surface area equals 1 half LP plus B. I got that L was 5, the perimeter for a square is 4 times the side length. And our side lengths are 6, so it's 4 times 6. So the perimeter of our base is 24. Plus the area of the base, which is side squared, so that's 6 squared, which is 36. If I plug all of this in, I get that my answer to number 7 is 96 inches squared. My volume is one-third the area of the base times the height. Well, we, have, we know that the area of the base was 36 times the height, which is 4. So that is 7, the volume is 48 inches cubed. All right, number 8. Let's see what people are missing. 42 is our slant height. We're missing our height, so I want to figure out the height first. So here's my right triangle. I know my slant height is 42. I know half of 35 is 17.5. So I have... 42 squared equals 17.5 squared plus h squared. Square root that to get h. I get h is 38.18. Approximately, so I'm going to use that to do this size stuff. Okay. So, surface area 1 half. My slant height is 42 times the perimeter, so that's 4 times 35. which is 140. Plus the area of the base, which is 35 squared, which is 1,225. I add all that together. I get my surface area. 4,165 yards squared for the volume. One-third the area of my base times my height. One-third the area of my base we got was 1,225 times the height, which we got to be 38.18. And I get 1,590.367 yards cubed. You might get a slightly different answer if you didn't, if you rounded differently. All right. Number nine. All right, I'm going to need to find my slant height. 
I know this part right here is half my base, so this is 5. I'm looking for my hypotenuse to find my slant height. So I get 12 squared plus 5 squared equals L squared. 144 plus 25 equals L squared. So I get that L is 13. So my surface area, 1 half L, which is 13, times the perimeter of my base. which is 40 plus the area of the base which is 100 so I get number 9 my surface area is 360 centimeters squared for the volume. One third base times height. The area of my base is 100. My height is 12. So I get that my volume is 400 centimeters cubed. Number 10. Temperature of all cones. My formula is for my cones, my vault, my surface area. Pi r squared plus pi r l. Volume, one third pi r squared h. Okay, so my surface area. I need to find my slant height for this one. So I have 10 squared plus 24 squared equals l squared. I get the L equals 26. So then my surface area, pi r squared plus pi r L, pi times 10 squared plus pi 10 times 26. And I get for number 10, I get that my surface area is 360 pi. inches squared, which is 1,130.973 inches squared. Volume, one-third pi r squared h, one-third pi 10 squared times 24, so that is 800 pi inches cubed, which is 2,513.274 inches cubed. All right, number 11, I need to find my slant height again. 6 squared plus 8 squared equals L squared. 100 equals L squared, so L equals 10. So my surface area pi times my radius, which is 6 squared, plus pi times my radius, which is 6, times my slant height, which is 10. And I get 96 pi meters squared, which is 301.592 inches squared for the volume. One third pi r squared h. One third pi my r is six, so that's six squared times eight. Six squared times eight divided by three. I get ninety-six pi meters cubed, which is three hundred and one point five nine two meters cubed. All right. This next one, number 12, you need to find the slant height and the height. I used my special rights. You could also use trig, though. So 
So if I know my side opposite, my 60 is 6 root 3, and I know my 30 degree side needs to be a 6, and my 90 side needs to be 12, you can also use, get the same heights using trig. For that one, just ask your teacher. So surface area. Pi times 6 root 3 squared plus pi times 6 root 3 times 12. And plug all that into your calculator, and you get 731.072 meters squared. Just plug it in straight into the calculator. For your volume, pi r squared h, one third pi times your radius, which is 6 root 3 squared, times your height, which is 6. And you get, plug all that into your calculator, and you get 216 pi meters cubed, so 678.584 meters cubed. All right, number 13. I'm going to start with my volume because it's a little bit less complicated. Because all I have to do for the volume is I have to find the volume of the cylinder and the volume of the cone and then add them together. So my cylinder is pi r squared h. Pi times my radius is 3 squared times my height of my cylinder, which is 50. So this gives me 450 pi units cubed. The volume of my cone is one-third pi r squared h. I figure out my height here. I know this part's 3, so 3 squared plus h squared equals 5 squared. And I get h is 4. So one third pi three squared times four. Plugging all that into my calculator, I get twelve pi. Then I add it together, I get this is four hundred and sixty-two pi units cubed, which is one thousand four hundred and fifty-one point four one five units cubed. So there is my volume. For the surface area, I need a little bit more involved. Remember, surface area is only the pieces I can see, so I want the lateral area of the cone. I want the lateral for the cylinder. And I want the area of one of my circles, because I'm only going to see this bottom circle here. I'm not going to see this circle here. Okay, so the lateral for my cone is pi rl. So that's pi times 3 times 5, which is 15 pi. The lateral for my cylinder is 2 pi rh. So 2 pi times 3 times 50, which is... 300 pi, and one circle is pi r squared, which is pi times 3 squared, which is 9 pi. I add all of this together, I get 324 pi units squared, which is 1017.876 units squared. All right, next page, number 14. 15 and 16 are all 
volume and surface area of the sphere. My surface area is 4 pi r squared. My volume is 4 thirds pi r cubed. Alrighty. So my surface area. 4 pi times 20 squared. And I get number 14. My surface area is 16,000 pi. No, 1600 pi centimeters squared, which is 5,026.548 centimeters squared. For my volume, 4 thirds pi times 20 cubed. When I do that math together, I'm going to leave mine as a fraction. So that's That's 32,000 pi over 3, which is the same thing as 33,510.321 centimeters cubed. All right. Number 15, surface area, 4 pi r squared. 4 pi times 35 squared. You get 4,900 pi, which is 15,393.804 meters squared. Okay, volume. Plug into my formula, 35 is my radius. Again, I'm going to keep, I do it all, keep it as a fraction. 171,500 pi over 3, which is 1,779,594.38 meters cubed. 16, surface area. 4 pi times 4 squared, which is 64 pi miles squared, which is 201.061 miles squared. Volume, which is pi times 4 cubed, which is 256 over 3 pi, which is 268.082 miles cubed. The surface area of a hemisphere. So I have half my sphere. So here's my picture. Remember, I do have a circle that's closing off my sphere here. So what I want is I want to find half of my sphere. So my surface area of half my sphere would be 4 pi r squared, but divide that in by 2. My diameter is 14, so my radius is 7. Plug all this in. I get 98 pi for just, just the part of my sphere. But then I have to add in this little this, the circle down there that's closing off my hemisphere. So that's pi r squared. So it's adding an additional 49 pi on, so I add 49 pi here, and I get 147 pi feet squared, which is 461.814 feet squared. All right, number 18, finding the volume of a cone. My volume of a cone formula is one-third pi r squared h. Well, I don't have the height. I have, here's my cone. I have my slant height, which is 30, and I have my diameter, which is 36, which means my radius is 18. If here's my right angle, I need to figure out my height using Pythagorean theorem. So 30 squared equals 18 squared plus h squared. So 
so 900 equals 324 plus h squared. And square root 576, and I get h is 24. So then I come over here, plug all that in. One third. My radius is 18. My height, I guess, 24. And I multiply all this out together. And I get that my volume is 2,592 2, pi feet cubed, which is 8,143.008 feet cubed. 19, I have to work backwards. My volume of a cone is 1,419.4, and it equals one third pi r squared times my height, which is 16. I'm gonna do I, I want to get rid of my fraction first. I'm going to multiply both sides times 3. You could do this a different way. So I get 4,258.2 equals 16 pi r squared. Divide by the 16 pi. Make sure you put that in parentheses, otherwise your calculator will divide the, by 16 and then multiply by pi. So divide by. I get that r squared equals 84.7141973. And then I want to square root that. And I get that a, I get that my height is 9 point, or my radius, excuse me, 9.204 meters. I'm just working backwards. Number 20, I have a volume of a cylinder. I know that's pi r squared h. This time I'm looking for the height. So I know 3,155.4 equals pi times 9 squared times my height. So that's the equals 81 pi h divide by the 81 pi. And again, I'm putting it in parentheses. I get 12.399 is my height. Number 21, I have surface area of a cone. My surface area of a cone is pi r squared plus pi r l. Surface area is 293.3 pi times my radius, which is 6.1 squared plus pi times 6.1 times l. All right, I'm going to do the pi times 6. I'm going to do this part first, because that's my whole number. And then I'm going to subtract. So 29.3 equals 116.8986626 plus 6.1 pi L. Subtract all of this. Okay, so I get 176.4 equals 6.1 pi L. Divide everything by 6.1 pi, and again, put in parentheses. There's one thing you're going to learn from this video, it's that you're putting things in parentheses. And I get that my slant height is 9.204 feet. 22. The radius of a circle is tripled. Well, I know, then what's the area? Well, I know my area of a circle is originally pi r squared. I tripled my radius. I mean, I'm taking my radius and I'm multiplying by 3. I'm going to show this two different ways. If I want to find my new, radi my new area, it would be pi times r times pi times 9r squared. I'm going to bring the 9 out front. 
Well, the pi r squared is my original area, so all I'm so I'm multiplying it by nine to get me my new area. And another way to look at it, I know my formula. I have to square the r. So if I know how I change my radius, I'm going to square that. So I get r squared times nine. The r squared is already there, so my only difference is my times nine. So that's how I get that. I have to multiply my area times nine to get my new area. All right, 23. Two cones have heights of 5 and 20. Well, I know. My heights are A to B. My areas are A squared to B squared. And volume are A cubed to B cubed. So I have that the heights are 5 to 20. But I know that simplifies to 1 fourth, and I always want to simplify everything. So then to find my ratio of my areas, all I have to do is square those 1 squared to 4 squared, which is 1 to 16. So there's my ratio of my areas. And to get my volume, I have to go back to the 1 to 4 and cube both pieces to make my ratio of my volumes 1 to 64. Number 24. I have a cylinder as capacity. Capacity is volume. Capacity of one gallon. Another cylindrical can has the same radius, but its height is doubled. So I'm doing 2H. So I plug this in. The 2 is going to come out front. Well, here's my original capacity, which was 1. So my new volume is going to be 2. Now that I look at that, I know it's 2 h I don't have an exponent, so the height part is still the same. So I know this multiply my original gets multiplied by 2 to find my new. So that means it's 1 times 2. So my new capacity is 2 gallons. 25. This time I have a capacity of 2 gallons. Another can is geometrically similar, so both the height is quadrupled. So I know of h times 4. And my radius is quadrupled. I can think of this two ways. I can think about it like I thought with number 23. 23, yeah, I think. No, 22. And just see, OK, here's my capacity. My volume of a cylinder is pi r squared h. So I multiply the height times 4. I multiply the radius times, I have to square the radius. So this would be 16 r squared times 4 h. 16 and the 4 come out front and become a 64. I have to multiply my whole capacity times 64. So I get a new capacity of 128 gallons. Or I can think about it like I thought with number 23, and I know my my lengths. My lengths all were A to B. My little one was 1. My big one was quadrupled. So to get to my volume, I have to cube both things. This would be 1 to 64, and then I set up my ratio. So I get that X is 128 gallons. Either way, works fine. All right, the ratio of my volumes. So I have lengths, area, and volume. I have, there's my volume. I know to get over to here, I have to cube root everything. So the cubed root of 8 is 2. Cubed root of 27 is 3. So there's the ratio of my lengths. To go from length to area, I have to square everything. So that'd be 4 to 9. Twenty-seven. I have an area of 43. I have a volume of 640. My larger one, I have a volume of 1250. I'm looking for the area of the base. All right. So I have the, again, this is a ratio problem. So the ratio of the sides. 
We have the ratio of areas. And I have the ratio of volumes. I have the volume of the I have the ratio of the volumes. I know this is 640 to 1250. I want to simplify that first. Always simplify it first. This simplifies to 64 over 125. Now I have I'm looking for an area, but I can't go straight from volume to area. I have to go back to find the ratio of my sides. So to find the ratio of my sides, I have to cube both pieces, which is 4 to 5. And then, so then I find the ratio of my areas, which would be 16 to 25, because this is 4 squared to 5 squared. Now that I have my ratio of my areas, I can set up a portion to solve for my area of my bigger solid. So 16 over 25, 43 over x, 16x equals 1,075, divide both sides by 16, and I get that my area is 67.187 inches squared. Yes. 28, we're almost done. 28 is a multiple part question. First part is I want to calculate the volume of the water in the tank. Well, my tank is a rectangular purism, so it's just length times width times height. So when I do all that, this is 6,000 centimeters cubed. Next, I want to find the area, the volume of my cylinder. So this is volume equals pi r squared h. Pi times 10 squared times 14. And so I'm going to put the pi in. So this would be 1,400 pi, which is 4,398.229 centimeters cubed. Then I'm going to dump that cylinder into my original tank. So I'm going to add the two volumes together. And so I'm going to use the one that did not have the pi in it. So my new volume is 10,398.229. So when I dump that in, go back up top. If I dumped it in, I'm going to add some here to my volume. I'm going to add stuff here. So my length and my width don't change. My height is going to change. So my length and my width are going to stay at 25 times 30, but I don't know the depth So I'm looking for. I know my new volume is 10,398.229 centimeters cubed. And this is times 758. So I divide both sides by 750. And I get the h, 13.864 centimeters. All right, last but not least, I know my radius, my ratio of my radius is a to b. Surface area is a squared to b squared. Well, it's because I'm being weird. I need to just make sure my, all my ratio things are right. And my volume is a cubed b cubed. All right, well, the cone is the easy one because I already have it simplified, so it's to square both pieces. 3 squared is 9, 4 squared is 16. To find the volume, I have to go back to the original one and cube it. 3 cubed is 27, 4 cubed is 64. To find my surface, to find my radius for the sphere, I have to first simplify this one, which is 25 to 49, so then when I square root, when I go backwards, I have to square root them. So this is 5 to 7. And then to go to from here to my volume, I have to square everything. 5 squared is 125. 7 squared is 343. All right, last one. I want to simplify this. 
81 over 375 simplifies to 27 over 125. So to bring it over here, I have to cube root everything. Cube root of 27 is 3. Cube root of 125 is 5. And then to bring it into my areas, I have to square it. So I get 9 to 25. And we are done. Good luck studying. Good luck on your test. So number 30 says that Elizabeth built a geometrically similar model of Chicago's Sears Tower. The height of the actual Sears Tower is nearly 442 meters. Elizabeth's model is 378 millimeters in height. If the width, the width of the base of the actual tower is 69 meters. What is the width of the base of the model? So what we can do here is we can do the actual over the model. We want to set up a proportion. So the actual height is 442 meters. The height of the model is 378 millimeters. So then for the other part of my proportion, I want to set this equal to the actual base, which is 69 meters, and then the width of the base of the model is x. So then I cross multiply. 69 times 378, 26,082 equals 442 times x, divide by 442. I get x equals 59.009 millimeters. Number 31 says the height of a cylinder is 3.7. So each is 3.7. The diameter of the cylinder is 1.9 meters longer than the height. So I need to add 1.9 to 3.7 to get my diameter. So my diameter is 5.6. So that means my radius is 5.6 divided by 2, which is 2.8. So I have my height and my radius, which is everything I need. So then I get my formula sheet. And I know the surface area of a cylinder is 2 pi r squared plus 2 pi r h. And then I grab my calculator. I grab my calculator and I want to store 3.7, store that as alpha h, and then 2.8, store as alpha r, nope, alpha r. So I can just plug it right into my calculator. 2 second pi r squared plus 2 pi r h. No, that's an m. Sorry. Equals. So I get my surface area is 114.3 five three meters squared. For the volume, it's pi r squared h. So pi times two point eight squared times three point seven. So again I get my calculator out. Pi r squared h. Okay. ninety one point one three one meters squared cubed so there's my volume there's my surface area so we are done